Hi everybody, welcome back to The Bolt Hole Biker. Today I'm gonna to make a video about my vlogging setup on my helmet. The one thing that makes my setup slightly unusual is that I like to use a, a flip front helmet. So that sort of threw up a few challenges with setting it up for a microphone, etc. But I've, I think I've worked out some really good ways around it. So I've had a couple of people in the comments ask me um, about my uh, helmet setup. So I thought I'd do a quick video here just to show you how I've got it set up and how I overcame some of the problems um, in setting up on a flip front helmet. So first of all, why did I get a flip front helmet in the first place if I knew I was gonna be setting it up for vlogging? Um, and the simple answer to that is that when I bought the helmet, I didn't know that I was gonna be vlogging. That, that's been a more recent development. There's, there's a few reasons actually. The first one is, I'm over the age of 40, so I'm allowed to get a flip front helmet. Um, second one's quite a practical reason, and that is that ever since I've been a kid, I've um, had a slight defect in one of my eyes that makes me see double. If I have something in my field of view, it kind of throws my eyes into a little bit of disarray and I, I see double. And I've always just, I've just lived with it for 40 odd years, you know, it's not a problem. But when I've got a, a helmet on with a, a you know, full face helmet, or when I've got the lid down on this, if I'm looking down at things, it can, it can throw my eyes out a bit. You, you might notice in some of my videos, when I've got the helmet down, if I'm looking down at instrumentation or anything like that, I quite often close one eye. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I didn't even realize that I did it until I saw myself back on video. Because I just I do it without thinking about it, so that that was another reason to get a flip front helmet. Um, but the primary reason and the reason why I bought this particular helmet, which is the the Shui uh, Neotech Two, was I was out looking for a new helmet, was trying on lots of different helmets, and you know narrowing it down to yeah, quite like that one, I quite like that one, and they had the the Neotech Two in a in a case you know, separate from all the other helmets. And I thought, oh, go on then, I'll try it on. I have my, my little boy with me. And he said, oh yeah, go on, daddy, try that one on. And I have to say, I put it on and it was just like, oh my God, it's so comfortable. It was so plush inside and it fit perfectly. It was just like, it was like putting an old pair of slippers on. It was just really, really nice. Not that I would put an old pair of slippers on my head because that would be stupid. But, um. Yeah, once I tried it, it was going to be difficult to go for one of the other helmets. And I saw the price of it and I was like, oh God, because it was really expensive. And I wanted to put comms in it, so I bought the Senna thing and I just thought, oh my God, this is, this is a lot of money for a helmet. But you buy a helmet and you've got it for years, haven't you? And you wear it, I mean, I, I wear this almost every day and... I don't like to scrimp on safety equipment, as I've said on, on a number of occasions. So that's why I went for the Shoei Neotech 2. It's a lovely helmet. Every time I put it on my head, I, I just love it. It's, it's a fantastic helmet, but it's a flip front. So how do you set up for vlogging on the flip front? I'm gonna show you now. One of the main considerations for me when I was setting up for vlogging was that I didn't have loads of bulky bits bolted onto the helmet. I, I don't like it when you see, you know, camera there and the um, uh, what do you call it? The the module for the microphone stuck on the other side and whatever. I wanted it to be neat and slick. So for that reason, I went for the GoPro Hero Eight purely because I saw that they were going to be bringing out this media mod, which is the cover that goes around it. That the, the um, that the GoPro fits into. And the reason I went for this is that it's got a three and a half mil microphone jack in the back, directly into the back of it. So you don't need the additional module that you normally need with GoPros in order to plug a three and a half mil mic in. So it, ma it obviously makes the GoPro slightly bigger, but only very slightly. And I think it's really neat. So that is what mounts onto the front of my helmet and that's it, apart from with the bracket, obviously. And I've made up a bracket just out of three or four sort of 90 degree bends and things like that, that clips into uh, an adhesive mount, same as most people have on the side of the helmet. I wanted to go 
onto the side of the helmet with the bracket bringing the GoPro around to the front. So when the GoPro is mounted, it's just in front of, roughly in front of where my um, chin is. So it's getting a view of what I'm actually seeing. And I quite like it there. And I can just about, if I look over the front of the um, chin part of the helmet, I can just about see if the red light on the GoPro is flashing because they do have a tendency to turn themselves off every now and then. So most of the time, if I'm not vlogging, this helmet is just effectively a bare helmet with just one plastic mount on the side and this part, which I'll show you in a minute, which is a three and a half mil cable. So I have the mount on the side of the helmet and the bottom of this media mod has the little flip down bits, same as on a standard GoPro any sort of GoPro mount to fix that on. And then I have it lent right back so that when the helmet's on my head, it's looking in the, uh, the sort of plane of vision that, that my eyes would be looking at. So that's the camera part, which was easy basically. Getting the um, images, no problem at all. The issue was with the audio. So the way that I've got around that is, when the camera is on the helmet, I've got a short cable that this came with the microphone that I bought. It was a um, Purple Panda mic, Le, uh, Lavalier mic, which I, I tried another couple of mics before, but I wasn't getting the, the right audio. I, I experimented with where I'd positioned the mic in the helmet. I tried various different sort of wind muff things. Um, I tried the, the dead cats. I tried the um, foam covers that you get with a mic didn't work very well. So then I tried a foam cover and stuck a dead cat on top of that, which is what I've got here. Yeah, that kind of worked. But after I'd used it a couple of times, it fell off when I was putting the helmet on and off. But I hadn't realized it had fallen off and I'd been out and I was vlogging. When I came back and I um, uploaded the, the, the footage, it actually sounded about the same. So I now don't have any muff on the um, mic at all. And I'll show you that on the inside when we get there. But from the front, so going from the camera, I have this short cable that goes into the three and a half mil jack on the back of the media mod for the GoPro. Very short cable. The GoPro setup fits onto the uh, side of the helmet and then I just have a permanently fixed jack the, the male part fits onto the female part of this mic cable like that that's my mic plugged in so when I get back from vlogging to take everything apart I just have to pull that out pop that off and it's back to being a standard helmet again. So this cable runs through the visor. I've had to do a very small, I don't know if you can see, see if I can get on this camera. I've had to do a very, very small cut in the uh, seal of the helmet where the visor goes, but it hasn't affected the weatherproofing of it at all. The, the visor sits down past that and it just enables that cable to, to fit through without, without fouling the, the weather seal at all. So that gets me into the helmet. Obviously with it being a flip front, there is the issue of having to allow cables to move as you open it. So when I open the helmet, I do have two cables that I've got them so that they're, when, when the helmet's open, they're just stretched to their full sort of length. So the mic cable goes in through the visor, which was the only way I could get it into, or the, the neatest way that I thought I could get it into the helmet. And then it immediately goes behind the uh, cheek pads here. So that's the only bit of cable showing. And I've got it pinned behind the poppers on the cheek pads. So the popper holds it in place there. 
I don't know if you can see that. So the cable runs down there. All of the cable for the mic just runs behind the, the padding of the helmet. So behind there, I've just tucked all the, the cable and brought it around to this side of the helmet. I'm not sure if I'm describing this very well, but the cable goes in behind all the padding on this side of the helmet, where the uh, cable comes in through the visor, behind all the padding, and it comes out this side, and then it's directed into the front chin part of the helmet, which I'll show you if I take this off. Take the chin bin off. Don't know if you can see, but it's very, very sort of low tech. All I've got is the mic gaffer taped into the front of the helmet. There's no muff on it, there's, there's nothing at all. Because I don't get any wind in this part of the helmet because the chin guard on the Neotech 2 is so good that once you've got the lid down, your neck is kind of pretty well enclosed. So you just don't get loads of wind noise coming up the underside of the helmet. So I have that mic positioned I can't touch it, but it's right in front of my mouth. Um, I did experiment with having the the mic at, at one point. I had it with a dead cat coming out from the side of the chin guard, so as it wasn't in the way. Then I tried it on the other side, over here. Then I had it in the, the front, um, but not directly in front of my mouth. I had it attached to the boom mic for the, my comms because I thought, well, that must be in, in the right place, but it just didn't work. The, the best place that I've found is literally just behind here, right in front of where my mouth is, and that's it. So in order for me to set up this helmet for vlogging, it's so quick and simple. I just have this little setup, which I'm not sure if you can see there, is just a few of these um, GoPro, uh, hinged parts which I've just got in with standard screws like machine screws rather than the um, uh, rather than the thumb screws that you get with a, a GoPro attachment so they're permanently fixed and I've got them really tight so that's at the right angle for me every time I use it that just clicks onto there the jack clips into there and that is set up. So, boom mic obviously for the comms. That's it. So I can just about see the back of the GoPro there. So when that is on, I can see the red light flashing. And I think that's a really neat solution. The other really, really key part to my Motovlog setup is the uh, GoPro remote that, as I mentioned earlier, on the odd occasion, you do get uh, instances where the GoPro just switches itself off midway through a ride or it's not recording when you think it is and what have you. What I've found with this, I, I have this strapped onto the handlebar of whichever bike I'm riding when I'm vlogging. and. All I ever need to do is push that middle button and that operates the GoPro and the screen on here, this screen here has exactly the same information on it as the information that you have on the screen on the front of the GoPro. So I can look down just at the handlebar and see whether I'm recording or not. So I'm not saying that it's foolproof because I have still had occasions where footage hasn't recorded but that's i don't know whether that's an sd card problem but th th this has been really useful for me and that's my that's my vlogging setup essentially i mean i've got other cameras which i put on different parts of the bikes etc but for my helmet setup that's it it's it's quite low tech it, it doesn't have any bulky parts anywhere and it's a really neat quick solution and for me that that's what works really well so I hope that's useful. 
Um, if you've got any questions or if you want to sort of know any of the part numbers of any of the items that I've sort of shown you in here, then just put them down in the comments and I'll try and answer everything as, as well as I can. Um, if the video has been useful, then obviously please leave me a like and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And particularly as we are still in the middle of a 1000 subscriber giveaway, the first 1000 subscribers to this channel will go into a draw for a Krieger US 30 dry pack bag um, giveaway, which I'll be delivering anywhere in Europe um, in person on a motorbike, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm just hoping it isn't someone in the next road from here. That's a sod's law and it's going to be, isn't it? But anyway, if it is, I'll find another reason to do a, a trip. So thanks for watching um, and I shall see you in the next video. Bye.